can you show me something very simple? Um, what what yeah. can you show me? I mean, like I said, I'm not, I've not been playing that long, so I am still um, amateur hour. Do you want to, you want to talk about a song or you want to talk about like a theory thing? Because I can show you the thing I show every guitar player that maybe doesn't know it. Of course. You know, mind if you get it. Okay. Somebody taught it to me and it blew my mind. Have you ever heard of that caged method? No, what is it? It's, um, it's basically how every chord fits together up the neck in a different, in a different pattern. Um, okay. You have, okay, you want to try that? Yeah, and I can show you a song if you want, but okay. So like if you spell out cage, you have C A G E D. Yeah. Let me turn this up. So you got your open chords. Do you know all those C like C A G E D? Yeah. In those shapes. So yeah. you can like spell caged up the neck if you move it uh, like a couple frets. And you can play these same shapes up the neck um, and you get the same chords. So like if you want to do a C chord, say you start in C, you got your C with your C shape, you move it up two frets, change the shape to the A shape. You got a C there again, you move it up again to a G shape, you got your C again. You want to do an E, move it up the neck, you got your power chord, but it's the same shape as like an E at the bottom. Same C chord, C chord like a D shape here, and then you're back to the octave. Do you do you jump up two frets every time? Uh, <laughs> yeah, two. Oh, except when you go to G, you jump up three frets. Two. But you can do that with every chord. It's just kind of an, a helpful way to like find different inversions up the neck. Yeah. Um, but it sort of like links everything together and just a kind of a little, I don't know, cheat. It's something that like you can do in any, in any chord. So say you start in the A, you can, there's G. You know, it just, it's kind of, um, okay. it just puts everything together. That's brilliant. Thank you. I never, I've never heard of that, but that kind of, I like the fact that that really helped you and that I, I sort of understand it because I haven't used up here enough and that's kind of what I want to do a bit more up here. So well, it helps with like rhythm um, and it, it helped me with soloing too. I mean, there's so many different scales you can learn, but the idea, you know, with guitar, because I, when I first started playing, I was learning all these open chords, you know, down yeah. at the base of the neck. And exactly. then I didn't really know what to do with the rest of the guitar. Like the rest of the guitar is kind of a mystery to me. And just, you know, I didn't get that concept right away, that caged method thing. But when you do, when, when you can like put it all together, it just sort of like blows your mind because it's all connected. And you can find any chord really kind of not not very far away you know i mean just because you're up here doesn't mean you can't find an a chord like within close reach it might not be the full a but you know you can find something that's that's really close and that just helps when you're you know writing songs and you you want a different vibe or um just just a different character to the chords um so have you, you, okay that's brilliant thank you and is there anything that um you can play from your new album, just like oh. not just like a tiny riff, or not to show me, um, but just like a little riff or something. You know, I let me think. Let me think. I mean, I don't really have anything off the new album just yet that I can that I can share. But I was thinking about um, one of my heavier riff songs. I wrote all these really crazy riff rock songs on the Wild Heart album. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a song that I play like every night at the show called Bitch on the Run that I thought might be a good one to share. Bitch on the Run, let's, yeah, let's listen to it. Like it's in an A and you hit this G, F sharp, open chord A. I don't know why I'm sounding so out of tune there, but... the verse. 
verse where you just go to these like a uh, bar power chords, but lies of man, money is king. See, you needed help, but the phone didn't ring. You got your wife, you got your car just to keep your kids out of the front yard. The way I kind of do that riff, because I do like this hybrid kind of picking thing where, you know, you hit with your pick. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you, sorry. <laughs> Zoom makes for weird angles um, where you, you do like a downstroke with your pick and then you do these hybrid, hybrid kind of motion. They call it hybrid picking. I don't really know what that means, but um, you basically are trying to utilize all your digits as much as possible, you know, the pick and the... I think, I think getting this hand like as mobile as possible is just as important as getting and comfortable on the neck because you can do so much with, you know, picking patterns and just yeah. it adds to the, uh, the interest of it, you know, rather than just strumming with a, with a pick. I mean, that's, that's something it just takes a lot of, you just got to do a lot of this kind of practicing. Thing. Yeah. That's kind but of what I've moved on to a little bit at the moment. I've been trying to do some more picking and stuff because it does make it sound a little bit more interesting. Like you say, rather than just a straight up strumming. Yeah, yeah, you, you can you can find some cool stuff to do in there. Like like there's just there's so many different. It, it just opens it up, you know, to to this variety. What are you working on right now? I mean, maybe I can show you something that like. Um. So well, the worst thing is the thing that I've really struggled with is I, I wanted to learn um, Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit because I was like, oh, that's quite easy. Like, but the palm muting. The palm muting, yeah. It is so hard. Yes. I, I can't do it. Listen to how bad this is, ready? Um, so. It's just because it, it's just a weird bridge. These, sometimes these chords, you know, just aren't the most comfortable to go for. Oh, um, it's, it, just, it just sounds like. Like, what the hell is that? That's not what palm musing sounds like. <laughs> just keep, you know what? You just keep working because, like, it'll it'll happen. It just happens like that. But you know, I I tell people a lot. Like, I know that. that I, look, a guitar teacher who's actually like knows what the hell they're doing would probably smack me for saying this. Um, but I feel like everybody's hands are a different shape and different size. And there's like a technical way everybody tells you to do something, but sometimes you just gotta like find the way that it feels right for your hand. You know, a lot of times you learn these these like uh, technical poses because you know you're saving yourself from damage down down the line. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like you know if you have particularly small hands, you might not have the reach, or you know you just might not have that physical capability to hit it exactly like that. And I think that could cause damage. You know, we have to take into consideration our hands are different. So for palm muting, man, that's just a hard shape. Like, I, I don't know why that, that chord, I mean. That key chord with it. And especially on that, on the second, at the top, I find like it's all, all the bottom. I always call this the top, it's the bottom, isn't it? Um, yeah. Like that, I feel like is easier. But it's when you go down to the second one, it's just so hard. I keep doing like like that, whereas it should just glide across the top. Do you think one your thing. posture changes from from that chord to that chord? Like you know, you're you're able to like really grip on the power chord, you know, with the full chord, and then when it gets yeah. here, does it change somehow? Like that, I mean, that microscopic movement, cause it's not that far, you know, it's like a centimeter, but sometimes that kind of movement will, will hinder you, you know? You know, maybe I should um, mute the top, the bottom string when I go down one. That might actually stop that from ringing out. Oh, is that, you're hitting the bottom string when, when you, when you move up? That, yeah, that might be. <laughs> I love I mean, how we're going with this. <laughs> Or you could mute it. You could always mute it down here, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, the palm muting, but it just like, it just doesn't sound good. My guitar teacher says it's not a button you can just press. It's like, you gotta just put the hours in, girlfriend. 
do they say 10,000 hours or something oh, like that? Right. Samantha, thank you so much for coming on Life in Six Strings. Um, I shall go and work on the uh, cage method. Yeah, check it out. I'm, I'm terrible at like describing anything on, on guitar stuff, but it, it kind of blew my mind when I, when I yeah. you know, figured it out. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully it blows yours too. It will for sure, it will for sure. Right, well, thank you. Um, take care of yourself and uh, look forward to hearing the new album. Awesome, thanks for having me on. Thanks, see you later.